If we are constantly crushing estrogen, you are not only leaving gains on the table, you are damaging your bone density as well as your cholesterol most likely if it goes under the baseline of what your biomarker should sit at. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907.com. ASMR Spritz Intelligent Iron. Check out this cologne. Derek's best cologne. By far, hear your noises. All right, today, well, first off, welcome back to Pedication. Today is Letrozole, which is the third generation most powerful aromatase inhibitor on the underground market for bodybuilding anti estrogen. And boy, do I have an opinion on Letrozole compared to my favorite aromatase inhibitor, Exemestane. I'm going to be featuring the history out of the Anabolics 11th edition, as well as go into my two cents when it comes to personally dealing with people using Letrozole, which you can contact me at Russo Lifts on my Instagram if you want to get a hold of me. I can't respond to everyone these days, but I literally do respond for free every fucking day. I try to be that influencer I would follow. I try and interact with all of you as much as I can recovering out of this fucking castration neuromuscular disease. I appreciate you all for bearing with me and I appreciate if you would hit the like on this video so more people see my shit. Let's get to the history. All right, Letrozole first hit the big pharma market in 1997 under Novartis Pharmaceuticals and eventually became one of the premier aromatase inhibitors, meaning you're blocking the aromatization pathway. When testosterone is done, right, it converts to dihydrotestosterone through 5-alpha reductase, and we've already touched on 5-alpha reductase inhibitors on this channel, or it goes to aromatase enzyme and forms estrogen E2, E1, all the estrogens, right? We want to prevent the aromatase pathway when we are adding in tons of exogenous androgens that convert into estrogen. If you have too much aromatization, you get gynecomastia, you get man titties. And the only way to get rid of them truthfully once they start growing is to get them surgically cut out, which I'll have Andrew throw up a bit of me doing that. AIs are this very, you know, useful thing, but I'm also going to touch on the damage, but letrozole is the most powerful of them all. I don't ever touch letrozole. I have a ton of letrozole, never really use it unless I absolutely need it. This is the heavy hitter. This is the, I'm a flat line, my estrogen type deal blocking all the aromatase in my body. So keep that into consideration when dealing with this. I did want to feature some of the side effects out of this book which includes hot flashes, joint pain, weakness, fatigue, mood changes, depression, high blood pressure, swelling in the arms and legs, and headaches, a decrease in bone density. You need ligands and androgens binding to the AR to have bone density. Don't think that this letrozole comes without side effects. And the main side effect, in my opinion, is anytime you add in an AI. Now, I have been accused in the past of like bashing AIs too hard. You don't know how to use AIs. And if you use an AI and keep your estrogen in check, then it's fine. Most people who are using AIs are just eyeballing it, crashing their estrogen, and then their cholesterol is fucked. And that starts getting out of control while they're eating like dog shit on a steroid cycle. I've seen it time and time again, where I look at their estrogen and I'm like, bro, you were bulking. I have the wet cycle video I just did. You should have kept your E2 at least in range. Use the AI, that's how the AI should be used. Instead, you flatlined it because you're afraid of gyno, your nipples got a little itchy one day and boom, instead of adding in like a rimistain or something mild, or something even like Exemestane, which I prefer, you're just like, fuck it, nuke it with Letro, the end. Well, now you've nuked the entire <laughs> estrogen level in your body and you're facing all these side effects while you need estrogen to gain muscle. I remember this one story Tony Hughes taught me about AIs. He had a friend who used an AI, I think it was Letro or maybe tons of Arimidex or something for an entire year and he tried to gain muscle. He gained zero muscle, but his physique looked amazing because he was holding no water because he had basically zero estrogen. You need estrogen to gain muscle. You need estrogen to bulk. Bulking, wet cycle, estrogen higher than usual and or in the reference range. If we are constantly crushing estrogen, 
you are not only leaving gains on the table, you are damaging your bone density as well as your cholesterol most likely if it goes under the baseline of what your biomarker should sit at. You should see, you should always pull baseline blood work. You should see where that estrogen level is at how you feel on it, how you feel when estrogen is raised, your serotonin system is going to be upregulated the higher your estrogen is. You're going to have more water retention, higher blood pressure, all these sort of things. See how you personally react. Some people tolerate high estrogen horrible. Other people love high estrogen. My libido is personally better on slightly higher estrogen than normal. You can see how other people would enjoy a higher dopaminergic environment with libido. It all depends on how you personally react. Using these AIs very sparingly is going to save you a lot of issues rather than just like, oh, my nipples are itchy. Just boom, grab the Letro start nuking it down. So the dosages out of the Anabolics 11th edition, as they're saying, male athletes and bodybuilders often take 1.25 milligrams to 2.5 milligrams per day in a dosage of half of a tablet. So they're saying one to 2.5 Letro a day. I'm saying that when I use AIs, I use Exemestane 12.5 mg. I started off every third day. And then as I'm choking out the aromatized pathway, I slowly amp it up to 12.5 every other day. And if I need more, I creep it up higher higher. I know guys that just start off with 5 to 10 Letro right off the bat and their estrogen gets fucked. You feel like shit. Your libido goes to shit. You need estrogen for libido. All these sorts of things starts happening. And even in my opinion, based on my crazy polarizing experience in the post finasteride syndrome world, is that I think AI abuse could cause the RNA AR castration if you're, you know, abusing AIs. I had a couple guys reach out to me who said they abused letrozole and they permanently fucked themselves up, castrated themselves from the AR freaking the fuck out from the AI fucking up the whole cascade up the stream to again cause ar overexpression once the ar overexpressed ligands don't bind with the ar correctly thus resulting in the down regulation of the hypothalamus down regulation of thyroid down regulation of everything you don't want to have this syndrome you want to avoid this syndrome like the plague it is worse than stage three stage four cancer your day-to-day -day life you will need a caretaker if you experience this syndrome at full blast this can happen from AI abuse. You should view an AI as an extremely powerful tool in your biohacking toolkit, and you should really only pull out Letro during a show or if you're running a super crazy high estrogen cycle like Dianabol and men. If you're running Dianabol, if you're injecting men, running Dianabol, I don't know why you would, and you're bulking, you are going to fight an estrogen conversion that letro is needed to come in there and combat that the other reason you would use letro is to dry yourself out right before a contest get rid of all that estrogen bloat and do it very taperly taper this dosage don't just shotgun letro i'm just saying i'm just this is a warning i prefer other ais letro is the top dog and i know how people think like up oh, I might as well pay for the best of the best. Letrozole is the best of the best. I have to use less of it to get the same, if not more benefit out of it. I don't think of an AI that way. I think of an AI as like, okay, like I have too much estrogen conversion going on. I need to slowly choke this out while not fucking up my systemic estrogen level in my body, which could cause serious issues, serious issues, right? Very serious issues. If you flatline it for too long and the RNA freaks out and over multiplies your AR and cash rates you. That can happen. That's like the worst outlier case scenario, but joint pain, depression, shitty libido, fucking your bones feel brittle as shit. You can't lift heavy. This is all sides of having low estrogen and top of not gaining muscle, right? You're not gonna gain muscle. Approach letrozole with a big side of caution. This is not the one that you add in on your stereotypical testosterone cycle. Your stereotypical testosterone cycle should be Arimidex or Exemestane. Use an Astrazole or Exemestane. I prefer Exemestane. I get why people like Arimidex. Figure out which one you tolerate better. Go that direction. Letrozole should be used if you're running mint, Dianabol, something that's really converting to estrogen and it's going to cause this insane influx of estrogen conversion, then you need the heavy hitter to offset that. But other than that, 
Unless you're drying out for a contest and you're gonna run an electro for a little bit, I see that. But if you're running this all the time, I just don't get it. Please stop. Please use a less powerful AI and learn that you're leaving gains on the table when you're throttling your estrogen so low because you're that terrified of getting gyno. People are like, why are you bitching so much about this? Because everyone is afraid of getting gyno. A gyno surgery, I think I did the price. I think it's like $6,000 I paid for a gyno surgery. A young aspiring bodybuilder who wants to step on stage does not want to get gyno and probably doesn't have the money to afford a gyno surgery. That being said, they go into every single cycle with this irrational fear of getting man boobs from using aromatizing compounds knowing they need to use wet compounds. Thus, they always use hardening cycles that don't gain them much mass put them in this high androgenic environment where they think they're gaining mass, but their muscles are just getting slightly more mature and they're really putting on no tissue and sure they look good on Instagram, but they look fucking small as shit in person. Or they're using wet cycles and then they're getting nipple itchiness, they notice lumps, and then they're fucking blasting AIs, trying to shrink it back down, constantly yo-yoing all their shit all their biomarkers or serotonin system everything is deliberate on this e2 systemic level that letrozole absolutely nukes into the fucking ground use a less powerful ai letro's the heavy hitter there's reasons to use letro in bodybuilding i get it most of the time arimidex or exemestane is more than enough less is more with ais i will see you guys in my next video